Uh, I'm Mike Frank. And this is uh, Joro. Hey. Uh, I'm from the product management side. I'm going to uh, lead off uh, and get off stage quickly and then let Joro get to the, uh, the engineering details of what we've got discussed on uh, what's new in the MySQL 8.0 security. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we talk about anything uh, forward product direction, that you know, this is just our intent. Uh, and really, at this phase of 8.0, we're looking for feedback. So um, all these things we, we talk about, uh, you know, if, if there's things we need to enhance or, or whatever, uh, Giuseppe, who just talked, gave us some ideas on roles that we're, we're likely going to do. So, uh, you know, please, please speak up. Okay. Then. All right. So we'll talk about just quickly on security landscape, and then we'll get into what's new in, in the MySQL 8.0. And um, more and more, there are just so many different risk multipliers uh, with the cloud, with high availability, with uh, external consultants, um, all those sorts of things uh, all lead to increased security vulnerability for your databases. And so this is definitely a hot area, area we're getting a lot of feedback on. I talk to customers uh, and users of MySQL all the time needing uh, either advice or new features or things like that. And so we're listening and a lot of what you'll see is what uh, is from the feedback that we got from uh, the community as far as what we needed to do to enhance MySQL security. Next slide. So um, the other part of it as well is that a lot of these regulations have been out there uh, for a while, but what we found is, especially in the last year, the, the uh, leniency toward uh, compliance uh, to them has, has started to end, uh, especially for some of the U.S. Uh, regulations with, with HIPAA and PCI and things like that, or they, they continue to have more, more scope to what they, they require of you. And then uh, for those of you in the, in the European Union, this new uh, GDPR uh, really adds a lot of requirements for making sure that you've got your data uh, protected properly so that you can protect uh, personal private privacy data uh, in it. So anyway, this, these type of things keep continuing, continuing on, and so that's why we're working on added features in, in the MySQL 8.0 uh, product. Next slide. And so really the keys and, and um, you know, you've got a go in, you've got to assess and see what your risks are, whether your security controls are in place right. Uh, you, you want structures, and we'll talk about our new roles, where you can go in and audit and, and quickly see what sort of uh, permissions and rights users have. Um, we want to do prevention, and so whether that's for, through cryptography, uh, well, you, where you see we, we've added some new things there, added user controls, uh, especially for powerful users. Uh, Joro's going to talk some about that. Um, but there's always still the possibility of a, a breach, and so uh, we've enhanced our, uh, our auditing, our monitoring, our alerting capabilities, or the ability to create things for MySQL um, that you can use to do uh, detection of, uh, of bad activity. And then finally, uh, recovery. And so, uh, you know, group replication, things like that, right? You need to ensure. Um, that if you, if you lose a service for whatever reason, and whether it's due to security or maybe other things, um, that you can recover from that outage quickly, right? So it might be through some sort of replication thing. It may be through uh, backup and recovery. And uh, also, once it happens, you need to go back, look at the forensics, see what happens so that you can make sure you block that hole so you don't just get your database back up and the same exploit happens again. Next slide. So. Just in general, we've got things for authentication, right? Different ways to have users log in, authorization, um, you know, what they're allowed to do, and we're expanding their uh, encryption, we're, we've expanded there. Uh, we've got uh, capabilities of a firewall, of doing auditing, of monitoring, uh, and making sure that we can, you can have the data you need to alert on and get alerts on those types of things, and then finally this availability side. So it's sort of brings all the sort of pieces together in MySQL that you need. So now Joro's going to sort of go into the details of what those actually things are. Okay, I have my okay. microphone here. All right, so um, 
I'm going to go over some of the details of the well, the new features that we have in 8.0 in general, and basically implemented um, well into the DMR releases that we had, the two DMR releases that we had so far. Uh, okay, so well, we have MySQL roles, <laughs> which is yeah a tasty treat. Right, so roles. Uh, basically, uh, I've seen a lot of implementations that try to mimic roles. And now we, since we have the real thing, uh, it is uh, improving greatly on uh, access controls. So it is easier to manage user and application rights. And uh, as Giuseppe mentioned in his talk, well, just before this one, uh, we can have multiple default roles. And uh, one thing that he missed is that we can export the role graph into a uh, fancy picture language that you can visualize into a really nice diagram. I have some examples next. So, um, OK, so what does the roles implementation look like in, uh, in MySQL uh, 8.0? So a role is uh, basically a user account with login disabled. And uh, internally, inside the server core, there is a hash of flattened privilege sets. Because, well, roles can be a graph. And you need to collect all of the privileges in, for each of the roles in the graph so that you can actually check them uh, against the actual actions of the user. So we do uh, flatten those, and we keep the, the flattened result so that we can reuse it. And you don't have to basically walk around the, the tree every time when you need to check a, a privilege, because that happens a lot. I mean, every operation in the database checks privileges, and that's a lot of checks. Uh, OK, we have two new tables, which, is, which are the roll edges. So uh, it's a kind of a normal graph implement, uh, representation, basically uh, what's connected to what, pretty much. And we have the default roles uh, because of the many-to-many -many, uh, users to roles. So we needed a separate table to normalize that. Uh, we have two new functions, which is the current role. Uh, that gives you the currently active roles uh, that you can use the privileges for. And there is the, that fancy one, the, the role graph ML, which basically produces a graph ML representation of the roles graph. Uh, and we have three new global privileges uh, which drive the well, handling of roles. Uh, you can grant those to people that are supposed to be creating, dropping roles, and so on. Um, and we have extensions to syntaxes like author, user, grant, revoke, uh, show grants is uh, changed a bit. Uh, so you need to, well, Check if you are using the output of uh, show grants in some scripts. You need to double check if it works. Um, OK, so roles can have an optional host part because they are user accounts in a way. Uh, but we are not currently using that. Uh, and uh, the current ACL code, the one that has been running since 4.1, still runs for uh, when there's no active roles. So that part is as it used to be. Uh, and yeah. So uh, users can have zero or more default roles. Uh, so you can basically assign a set of roles that are automated, automatically activated when you log in. So you don't have to do set roles. And set role is actually not really even a, um, uh, well, set role is a security feature, really. Uh, because uh, you, when you are wearing multiple hats, like if you are a DBA that also can use certain application and whatever, you don't want to be using that application with your DBA privileges. So that's why set roles is handy. Because you can also limit yourself to just, well, use the right set of privileges that you need for the current operation. Um, OK, some examples here. So this is the fancy graph that we can produce from GraphML. Uh, those are the commands on top. 
uh, when you execute those and when you do rows graph ML, you get the XML source of that diagram. There are a lot of visualizers, so that's a nifty documentation tool. Uh, uh, as you can see here, it also makes a difference how you grant the rows. Those are different uh, colors, which basically the red ones represent the rows granted with admin option. Uh, that's because uh, when you grant a row with an admin option, uh, you, the person you granted that to can grant it to other users. So it's like with grant, grant option for rows. So it's a bit different there. Okay. So uh, roles, I, uh, if you want to dive into the details of roles, Giuseppe had a really good presentation. Uh, he will be uh, well posting the, the, the presentation on Twitter. There are kind of a lot of details there that uh, I tried not to go into because of, well, the other things. Uh, Okay, so the, the other new important addition into the latest DMR is that we are, uh, uh, well, not the latest DMR, the one before it, is that the ACL statements are atomic now. So as you are probably aware, the, um, the MySQL server can uh, execute multiple uh, create users, like a single create user can create multiple users, uh, like a single command can do a number of users. And uh, traditionally in MySQL, they were done like in a loop, and when some fails, the others stay. So if you create three users and the second user does, cannot be created, uh, then you still get the other two, which is kind of weird. And uh, yeah, we fixed that. Uh, we are, uh, well, using, um, uh, some some new logs that we are adding, and uh, yeah, there is a new MDL log that we use, and um, this basically creates atomicity, which is kind of a normal property for SQL databases, and that's a bit different from just updating the tables because of all these specialized caches that we have. So it was a bit of a big deal, but uh, internally, but uh, the end result is that you get this atomicity, which is kind of nice. Okay, so that's the latest addition here. Uh, this is in uh, the DMR eight zero one, uh, and that's dynamic privileges. So it's a bit of a stealthy feature, but it uh, is an important architectural change inside the server. Uh, what this does is the following. Uh, so far, in, uh, uh, when you want to add a new privilege to MySQL, that basically includes solder table MySQL user, which is kind of the staple of the ACL tables, uh, and then a lot of other things. So the, basically, the, raw, the, the privileges were kind of dipped into the, the other system tables and there were, was no easy way to add new ones. So as a result, a lot of code just, well, hinges on the super privilege. And the super privilege becomes this jack of all trades uh, where you can basically, well, uh, clean the dishes, do the laundry, everything, pretty much. Uh, which is bad. I mean, it's a bad precedent and creates a lot of bad, uh, well, use cases. So what we did here with dynamic privileges is we added um, a component service. Thing. Uh, we added a component service that uh, allows you to define easily uh, new privileges even from plugins. Well, you just need one you created. Uh, right. So, and we are using that same thing for, um, well, replication, all the, all the plugins that need privileges. And as a result, the super privilege uh, is, still stays, but uh, you can now kind of sub-grant it. All individual uses of the super privilege are now grantable separately with new names. Right, so uh, some, some details here about uh, what I just said about adding the new privileges. That's how they work. 
same, same, same way as the normal privileges, but uh, it's just stored in a different way in the system tables. Uh, okay, and here are some examples of the privileges that we added. Uh, as you can see here, we have a system variable submin, so we can now just grant setting system, pre uh, system variables and it will work. Right, so um, it's a bit of a stealthy feature again, so please take a look at these privileges. We have created some sort of a set of privileges that we think are the right ones, but people may have different opinions. I mean, some may be subdivided further, some may be, uh, well, aggregated, who knows. So uh, please take a look, uh, see. If where you don't necessarily have to tell us what the privilege is, but you have to tell us a use case that maybe where you're having to overprivilege a certain user and you need some sort of solution. And what we can figure out how to, to meet that use case. Um, but yes, so Ronald, do you have an idea? Yeah, we, functionally we can. Uh, it's a bit of a, some people are attached to super in a way, so it's a bit of a controversial topic right now. But, but, but the idea is to give them another option, and so, and you could create a role that was just for doing that, and then there's, because there's privileges that would map to a lesser capabilities, yeah. Reverse privileges, yes, I, I've heard that idea. We don't currently do that. So it's, oh, okay. So it's not in this work, but uh, subdividing the privileges is kind of orthogonal to it. It's a good feature. We don't yet have it. Uh, we will consider it, definitely. No, it's just like, you know, in the 97 hour table, you've got to grant access to 97 Right, hour. right, right. I, I've seen that one working. I, uh, well, it's just different from this one. All right, uh, so in the interest of time, I will be quick. Um, the other important thing is the TDE, uh, transparent encryption. So we do, um, in that latest milestone, we added uh, InnoDB redo and undo encryption. And the, those are the details. Please check them in my presentation. Later I will post it. There's well, details on how to use it. Uh, okay, so uh, quickly on the APIs that we added. Uh, we believe that uh, every change that we do in the server should be uh, such that, that the, each uh, component can use it. And uh, the key ring API here is the, um, well, a demonstra uh, demonstration of that. Basically, uh, it's very modular and it's highly extensible. The keys travel from plugins to backends and then to uh, external storage eventually. Uh, all right, so there's more details on, on that. Uh, and uh, those are the current keyring plugins that we have. Right, uh, with that, I want to open the floor for questions. Sir, otherwise, if you want to yeah, you lose compression ratio if you do it the other way around. Yeah. So encryption comes last. Good question. Okay. More questions, anybody? No? Great. Thank you for showing up.